Here at Asian Film Fans, we're lucky enough to be in contact with some great independent filmmakers. We've already covered the Mai Tai drama Ban Mai Tai and the Taiwanese thriller The Very Last Day. This latest review comes courtesy of our friends at Tokyo Bay Films, a new horror upstart situated in Japan who wants to bring the grindhouse and low-budget horror vibes of the 1980s into a modern setting. Set to do the rounds of the horror movie festival circuit in 2010 and 2021, we got a sneak peek of the movie before it hits wide release. Hi, I'm the Arnie Dance from Asian Film Fans, and welcome to this review of the Japanese independent grindhouse horror movie, Tokyo Homestay Massacre. And if you're squeamish, then this might not be the movie for you. Three American students, striving to be YouTube stars, travel to Japan and make plans to stay in a local family's house to create a video about their experience. In a nod to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the house that's been arranged for them to stay in is owned by a creepy family looking for fresh victims to sacrifice to their deceased family members. When our three students decide to go on an unguided midnight tour of the home, they start to uncover some grisly secrets of their homestay family, and they quickly realize that while they are welcomed at their house, it's not for the reasons they think. Gore lovers and fans of Grindhouse Cinema will find a lot of pleasure in this film, especially the insanity of the second half when the chopping starts. If you love buckets of blood, then you'll be in Gore Town. As mentioned, there is a slight Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe with the Homestay family, sans the chainsaw-wielding maniac. The Japanese family are an interesting bunch, and it would be great if there was an opportunity in the future for the directors to revisit their story and give the audience an insight into who they are, because they are the most interesting element of this film. As mentioned, the Japanese family is the standout of the film. They're an eclectic mixture of oddballs, including the overexcited father who can speak English, and the sour grandmother who hates foreigners and just wants to get the sacrifice done. There's also the two children, the pigtailed bookworm daughter and the long-haired mentally underdeveloped son. But the standout characters are the two effeminate male police officers. They're only on screen for a short amount of time but the amount of self-awareness they have of themselves as characters and their performance adds to the humor of the film. The plot of the movie is interesting and entertaining, but it just felt a little underdeveloped. There's also a few long take shots that seem to have been carefully rehearsed in a nice little nod to one cut of the dead. And while the Japanese family was a standout, Unfortunately, the three American characters are not. Generally unlikable, there was little connection with them. My connection with the Japanese family was much stronger. On top of them being generally uninteresting, the rushed acting of the Americans, specifically John, at times affects the flow of the movie, with emotions ranging from stoic to over the top, even in the same scenes. Also, and this is a personal preference, I wasn't a fan of the ending. I would have preferred, and indeed I was cheering for, a different ending that unfortunately didn't come. But the late teen audience will probably connect stronger with the characters and ending than I did. Grindhouse is a genre all of its own when it comes to horror, and you'll already know if you like it or not. If you're a fan of Grindhouse horror, then watching this film is a no-brainer for you. General horror fans approach with caution if excessive gore is not your thing, but if you're a lover of interesting, outrageous Japanese characters, then there is something here for you. My recommendation is your choice. If you've seen it, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support our channels.